Hi everyone and welcome to a snack size episode talking about the behaviour details that you find in pretty much every widget you find in the widget blueprint. What I mean by behaviour details is that if you click on a widget on the right hand side details options you'll find a section called behaviour. This section is pretty much common across all the widgets that you have in your palette so it might be a good idea to understand what each one of the options do does. The first one we have is tooltip text. So on the green box here, I've typed in this is the green box. And what that means is that if I play the game and hover over it, you see a tooltip arrive saying this is the green box. Now you can't change anything aesthetically about it, it just changes the text. So it doesn't make it great for actual making games in, but great for debugging. Next option is enabled. This basically turns off or on the interactivity of that widget. So if you just want to be visible but not active, that hand comes in really handy. So for example, my blue one here has an option where if I click on it, it changes color, like so. And if I go over to my enabled box and untick it, that functionality will no longer work. Now you see the gun is firing instead. That's because my hit test for my mouse is going through the widget because it's being ignored and going straight through the, to the game, making my gun shoot. You also notice that when it's disabled, it makes it do, does this gray out effect. You can turn that off or on and customize your disabled look as much as you like. To turn it off, you go up to where it says appearance and expand up your show advanced and untick the show effect when disabled. So now with it disabled, you should see it looks the same as it always does. Next we have visibility. Visibility changes the options of how visible a widget is. There are five different options. Visible means that it is visible and you can see it and you can also hit test it. So you click on it and it does something or registers it. If it registers a hit, that means anything beneath that will won't receive the hit. You can only receive the hit once. Next, you've got collapsed. That means it is not visible and the space it occupies is also gone. So for example, if I go to this red one here and change it from visibility to collapsed and then play the game, you'll see that the green and blue now fill that that occupied space. Whereas if I change it to hidden, it makes it invisible, but that space is stored there, saving it for it. Next, you've got non-hit testable. So if I go to my blue box here and change it to non-hit testable self and, and all children, that means when I click on it, nothing's registered but that's also applying to itself and all of its children inside of it. So be careful when using that. And that's often where I find people have messed up is this option here. If you want it just so it affects only itself, you want to change uh, the non-hit testable to self only. That means that the blue box won't register the hit, but anything inside of it will. So a good way to test that out is put a button inside of it. Let's put a button inside of that. And I'm gonna give it some button, some padding. like so. So border one here, which is the blue border, uh, we're going to change it so it's non-hit testable self and all children. So now when I click this button, you should not be able to click on it. Notice how the button isn't changing, it's staying the same image. Whereas if I change it to self only, the blue box will no longer change, but the button you can see here is taken hit instead. Okay. Next we have is render opacity. This basically changes how see-through the option is. So if I type in 0.5, it makes it semi-see-through. Pretty basic. Zero, nothing, one, full, 0.5, half and half. In the advanced options, so you get to that by opening and closing this arrow here. In the advanced options, this is where you can set up your own tooltip widget. Now I'm going to do a whole video and talk about how you can customize your tooltip in a great length and talk about how it works. But I've set up my tooltip widget already here. And I'm going to set it up so it receives text from here too. So I'm going to bind this to get tooltip widget, which is a function I've already made. And again, I'll talk through this in a lot more detail in a separate video. So now you have a custom tooltip and that's where you do tooltips properly. There you go. So rather than having this little box, you can customize it to look however you want, like so. And finally, we can change the cursor that we see on it too. 
If you tick this, you can change this to any text, uh, any to any cursor you like. So here we can change this to the crosshairs, for example. So when I hover over it, the mouse cursor will change to crosshairs. Now you can also change the uh, the cursor to any image you like as well, but we'll do that in a separate video to showcase how to do that. But there are all the options you have in the behavior section. And that concludes our video. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch more episodes like this, talking about more widget stuff, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where you can find that next episode as well as many, many others. There are exclusive content there too, such as exclusive behind the scenes, sneak peeks and previews of an upcoming content, access to Discord only rooms and servers, as well as many other benefits at different tiers. Thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you once again. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.